Hi everyone, and thanks for joining this video on how to create a custom vulnerability. In this video, I will cover how to create a specific custom vulnerability and the tools I use to create it, and I will also show you in a live demonstration how this behaves on the firewall. Now, if you have played around with creating custom app IDs, you will see some similarities in this video. If not, then I would recommend to watch that video as well. Uh, because it uses a different use case scenario which you might find useful in your specific uh, environment. Now, similar to custom app ID, custom vulnerabilities are uh, created using pattern-based uh, signatures for traffic that doesn't match any of our existing vulnerabilities. Now, in order to figure out these patterns, we'll be using a packet capture tool like Wireshark in my use case example, let's say you would like to create a custom vulnerability for users that are trying to browse using the Chrome browser. You would like to identify that traffic and trigger a vulnerability on that. So in order to uh, identify that traffic, we're going to capture it first uh, uh, using Wireshark or any other packet capture tool you might uh, find useful. Um, and try to identify any pattern match we can use to identify the traffic. So in my Wireshark you'll notice, you'll notice I have already created a filter to well, filter out any other unrelated traffic. So without further ado, let's start capturing this. There we go. And let's just go to this website. Oh. Let's first use our Chrome browser. Let's refresh this page. Boom, okay, we're there. Let's stop this capture. All done, and let's search for that get request, which is right here. And let's follow the TCP stream. Here we have some uh, nice header information and we'll try to see if we can find anything that's related to Chrome that we can identify and that we can use in our custom vulnerability. Right here we have our user agent information and sure enough there is Chrome in there and also the Chrome version number even. Which is something, so this is something we can uh, use in our custom vulnerability. Now, just to show you, uh, I will do the same thing using a Internet Explorer browser. You will notice that there's no mention of Chrome in the uh, header information there. Um, so let's clear everything right here. There we go. Oops, sorry. Let's create uh, the TCP filter first. So we can rule out any unrelated traffic. Start the capture. There we go. And now let's do the same thing using Internet Explorer. Let's refresh that page. There we go, all done. Stop that capture. Let's look at our get information, follow the TCP stream. We have user agent information here as well and as you can see there is no mention of Chrome browser. So we can go ahead and start using that pattern match in our custom vulnerability. Moving forward to our firewall configuration I'll show you my very basic policy. It's an any allow rule which has no profiles attached to it yet. So in order to create a custom vulnerability, we'll go to the Objects tab, Custom Object Vulnerability. We'll click the Add button to create a new one. We have two tabs here. First tab, Configuration. We have a range of thread IDs we can use. Any number within the range will do. Let's give it a name. 
optional comment we can add. Let's add a severity and a direction. Default action is alert. We can use any of the other as well. Uh, but let's leave it at alert level now so we can have something to look for in our thread logs later on. Affected systems client. Okay, so we have some optional information here as well that we can add, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, so in order to create our signature, we go to the signatures tab. We'll leave this at standard. We'll click the add button. Let's give the signature a name. Click the add a condition uh, right here at the bottom. Uh, it can be an add uh, or, or an add and condition. I'll be using the add and condition. Um, there's only going to be one condition in this case, so we can leave this uh, in their default settings. Uh, in our case, uh, we'll be doing a pattern match on the HTTP uh, request header information which is right here and the pattern we are looking for as you uh, saw earlier in the packet capture it's going to be Chrome. Notice that uh, Chrome isn't enough because the minimum length for this field is 7 uh, Chrome is only 6 uh, but there was a, a slash in there so uh, let's comment uh, it out and add the slash. Now it's a valid uh, pattern match. There, we can uh, add a qualifier and a value in there but that's not really needed uh, right now. Click OK, OK and OK and we have our uh, custom vulnerability created. I'm just quickly going to make a small change to the name right here to make sure that this is a unique identifier that I haven't used earlier. There we go. Now moving forward uh, with our configuration, we need to enable this custom vulnerability. Uh, to do so, we go to the uh, vulnerability protection right here. Let's uh, clone our default uh, vulnerability protection. Let's edit that one. Give it a useful name. Now, in order to enable the custom vulnerability, we go to the exceptions tab, type in the uh, threat ID that we created, show all signatures, and we will see the custom vulnerability right here. Make sure to enable it and click OK. There we go. And then last but not least, uh, make sure to apply this vulnerability protection uh, profile to your policy. Go to your policies tab, edit the profile, select your vulnerability protection that you just created, and don't forget to commit your change. Now that this is committed, we can see how this behaves when we now try to browse using a Chrome browser. Now before we do that, let's check our monitor tab, thread logs, and confirm that there are currently no threads or no thread logs. So in order to test the behavior, we're going back to our Chrome browser, hit that refresh button, Site still working as expected. Uh, recall that we didn't block anything, we just created an alert action which should now be visible on our firewall. So without further ado, let's go back to our firewall and check that. So back on our firewall on the monitor tab thread logs, if we hit the refresh button, sure enough, we have some uh, threads there now. 
uh, or vulnerabilities matching our uh, custom vulnerability that we created. That concludes my video on how to create custom vulnerabilities. Uh, here are some additional links you might find useful uh, explaining some other use case scenarios or topics I touched on.